No, your grandma probably knows who Dr. Strange is. Nana, quick, tell me about the Eye of Agamotto. Oh, that's easy, Junior. It's when Stephen Strange starts fucking my loose with his old and then he wipes it down with the cape. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you five comic book art tips you're not going to want to miss, as well as drawing Doctor Strange. So stay put. <laughs> Okay, gang, as always, no floor play, right into the tips. Tip number one, know your lines, baby. Know your lines. Much easier said than done. I'm gonna say that again, much easier said than done. Lines, well, they literally come in all shapes. Shapes, sizes, textures, density, etc., etc., etc. So, the vast uh, array that you can choose from. What is going to happen is when you are done with your thumbnails, you should already have some some type of inclination as to what you're going to be using your lines for, how you're going to be using them, therefore, which ones you're going to use. Super, super important. This is going to come down to a, a choice and a hybrid of your own line stylization as well as line utility. Are they going to be straight, long lines or thin little scratchy lines? Well. The choice is yours. Choose wisely, my friends. Tip number two, choosing the right tool. AKA, pick your weapon, man, or gal. Listen, whether or not you're working in Procreate or traditionally or whatever your medium is, be it brush, be it pen, marker, whatever it is that you're using to make your mark on the page, be it real or digital, you need to know your goddamn tools, bitch. You better learn how to use that brush. I mean, I'm joking around, but dude, ser dude, seriously, seriously, learn how to use your brushes, especially for those of you in Procreate where the amount of brush packs you can download are endless. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about actually making one of some of my own. If you'd like to see that, matter of fact, if you'd like to see me, if you'd like to see some of the brushes that I use and download them for yourself, let me know in the comments below, please. Guess what? The only way you're gonna know those brushes is if you test them, test and practice, whatever you wanna call it. Make the mark, figure out how these marks are working from you, the only way you're gonna know this and the only way you're going to know very much like Batman reaching in his utility belt and figuring out, you know what, guess what? Batman would <laughs> Batman would die if he didn't know what tools and what utility belt to use during what scenario. That is you, you have to be Batman. You have to figure out what tool you're going to use when and the only way you know how to do that is by practice. Know your brushes. Uh. Tip number three. Well, this isn't a tip, this is more of a statement, but I guess we'll consider it a tip. Colors. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, hey, vague asshole, how about you? a little bit more specificity? Okay, specifically, finding your swatch. Now, for some of you, color might be new. Hell, I'm no color expert. And it's super overwhelming at first, especially when I tell you that you're gonna want a crash course on colors, you're gonna wanna know the fundamentals. You're gonna wanna know the difference between Monochrom monochromatic, complementary, split complementary, analogous, uh, triadic, uh, tetradic. Again, this might sound like complete nonsense and jargon, but it's super important to know. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below and it will take you to a free site. It's from Adobe. It's an awesome way to keep track of all your color palettes and explore and play around with some new ones. You can export them right into Procreate. Super, super easy and a great way for you to practice your coloring because you're gonna need it because uh, it's way more than a single tip here will do you. Get cracking on learning what kind of palettes are going to work for your piece. Tip number four, and this is just a kind of a loose one, right? This is kind of one of my own. Relax. And seriously, that might sound, yeah, you might want to roll your eyes at that, but hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Oftentimes, especially when I'm doing this, and this happened this week, so I'm going to tell you a little anecdote along with the next tip as to why this is important and why I decided to actually remove one of the normal tips that you'd hear and put this in its place. You gotta have a little fun. I was talking about this with a friend of mine this week. Oftentimes when this becomes your job or becomes a profession to some degree, when it stops being a hobby and it stops being something that you do for fun, oftentimes it can kind of kill the love that you have of it. So it's important to take a step back sometimes, stop stressing out, relax, and remind yourself why it is you love doing this in the first place. So please, please, please keep that in mind. Let this be a tip that you really do take take heed of. Okay, I gave you guys a little bit of the sweet. Get ready for a fistful of salt because this next tip is titled F*** Your Inspiration. <laughs> and it's harsh as hell, I know. But listen, listen, listen. This one goes out especially to you aspiring professionals. God, this is a tip that you're going to have to really take to heart. 
The same way that a plumber or electrician or carpenter, whomever doesn't wait around for inspiration before they work, neither do you. Sometimes you're gonna call out to the muse and she, well, that bitch is gonna leave you on red and you're on your own. In that case, you have to put your worker hat on and get to work. You can't wait around all day for something to strike you. I'm gonna tell you what happened with this piece. I put about anywhere from two to three hours into a completely different Doctor Strange piece, one that didn't work. I tried my damnedest, my hardest, to get it to work, but it didn't. I had to scrap the whole thing and start anew. Actually, I saved it in case anybody wants me to post it up on Patreon or something, let me know. I could show you guys where it all went wrong. But what I'm getting at is the last thing I wanted to do after essentially wasting a bunch of my time is start a new piece that I had no interest in doing because I was, you know, I was in a mood. But you know what? I made a contract, essentially a nonverbal contract, an informal contract that you guys would get a brand new YouTube video each week. So the video had to get done. The video doesn't get done unless there's a new piece of art. So I sat down and I made another one. And I actually like the way this one came out much more. But there you, there you go. Tip number five, F your inspiration, get to work. Okay, get ready for things to get a little silly because in the next segment, I'm gonna be talking about some of my favorite parts about Doctor Strange and the MCU, as well as all the weird, crazy rumors that we've heard for the Multiverse of Madness. Don't go anywhere. All right, all right, all right. Let's talk about Doctor Strange, specifically Doctor Strange and the MCU, only because that's primarily where I know him best, which again, for any comic book nerd out there, and as a comic book artist, I know this is blasphemy to say. However, I have to be completely honest with you guys. I wasn't the biggest Doctor Strange guy. I mean, I know about the about the eye and about him being the source for Supreme, and I enjoyed him. I thought he had a cool look about him, but I never really was big on his comics. Same thing with Iron Man. I wasn't a really big Iron Man guy, or Guardians of the Galaxy for that matter. The MCU has done much in the way of making it so that these characters that weren't the biggest sellers at the time are now, well, they're household names. Every, you know, everybody, if, you know, your grandma probably knows who Doctor Strange is. Nana, quick, tell me about the Eye of Agamotto. Oh, that's easy, Junior. It's when Stephen Strange starts fucking my loose with his old and then he wipes it down with the cave. Now, when it comes to Doctor Strange origin, the MCU, they went pretty formulaic in, in that it mirrors Tony's, whereas these are both two middle-aged white dudes who are kind of fucking arrogant, rich dickheads who don't give a fuck about anyone else but themselves, who, well, their life is turned upside down, they see the error of their ways, they gain new powers and abilities through crook or crook, and then decide to live their life for the better. And at the end, they fight an evil version of themselves and, you know, yada, 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 save the day a hero is born. Now, you know what, now that I think about it, because of the mirroring of the origin story between Doc and Iron Man, I wonder if now that Iron Man is gone, spoiler alert, <laughs> And the rumors out there have Doctor Strange taking up the new mentorship of Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Well, you know, side note, how many mentors does the kid need? Whatever. If it's true that Doctor Strange is Spider-Man's new mentor, paired with his backstory, paired with what we know of the character, is there any chance that we're going to see Doctor Strange pick up the mantle of Iron Man in his position as, you know, lead Avenger? And now that we're on the uh, speculation train, let's dive completely into the multiverse of madness rumors. Firstly, there are rumors, and none of these are substantiated, take them all with a grain of salt, that Benedict Cumberbatch was on set during Spider-Man 3. Now he's back filming it in London. Rumors that you know who's on his set in London? The Scarlet Witch, which is very interesting because the rumor mill also has it that three Marvel properties are tied together WandaVision is going to lead directly into Doctor Strange, and then that will lead into Spider-Man 3, which is very interesting because if we're dealing with the multiverse in the Doctor Strange movie, it would make sense that the Spider-Man movie that follows it would have to deal with the Spider-Verse. Also, interesting side note, Sam Raimi, the first director of the three Spider-Man Tobey Maguire films, is the director of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Men. You guys know I love the multiverse. You guys know I love talking about it because again, as always, the possibilities are endless. There is a chance that we see a John John Krasinski uh, Captain America because he tried out for the role. There is a chance that we see Chris Evans show up as the human torch from Fantastic Four. There is rumors that, you know, you might get Tom Cruise as Iron Man because he was one of the original names bandied about before RDJ got the role. When we're talking the multiverse, all bets are on the table, or all bets are off the table? Listen, whatever the phrase is, no holds are barred? Some bars are held? I don't know. Listen, listen, I'm not a smart man. 
All I know is that the multiverse leads to chaos in the best way possible. The writers would now be only limited to their imagination. Can Deadpool show up? Can a cameo of any? Can freaking Wesley Snipes as Blade walk in the background of a thing? Seriously, think about it right now. Think about maybe your favorite Marvel character that you've ever seen on the big screen or small screen. Any one of them can show up. Maybe you're a big Charlie Cox Daredevil guy. Maybe you loved the Kingpin in that series. Anything is possible with the multiverse. So I am immensely excited for it. You know what, now that I mention it, I'm actually curious as to you watching this video right now, what character you like the most and what character you'd like to see them bring back from the dead essentially. You know what, for me, this is a tough call, but I think I've decided I want Hugh Jackman and Sir Patrick Stewart to reprise their roles as the Wolverine and Professor X. I just, I want to see them in the MCU, man. I've been wanting to see that for like a decade plus knowing that it would never happen, but now it actually might. It actually might. So let me know down below if I missed any of the cool rumors, any of the speculations. Let me know what you think and let me know if you guys are actually interested in seeing this movie because you know I sure as shit am. Dude, you made it to the end. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Huge thank you to all my Patreon subscribers, all my Twitch subscribers, everybody who's been liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, even some retweets. Uh, I see all of them. I appreciate all of them. You guys are the best. If you want uh, merch, prints, all that other stuff. Oh, even my shirt is actually, uh, well, you could buy that too. Links are in the description. And until then, be awesome and I'll see you in the next one.